Hello again, I'm Dean Karstens and this is Dean's N-Scale Trains. Today I'm going to talk about my introduction into high resolution 3D printing using resin rather than uh, PLA, PLA plastic. I'm going to start with a final comparison between PLA filament 3D printing and resin 3D printing. The filament printing is much easier. It uses solid filaments that don't require any um, serious safety handling. The, the resin uses a liquid which is harder to handle, much harder to clean up, but it gives much, much better results. Here you can see a direct comparison between the PLA parts on the left and the resin parts on the right. As you can see, the resin parts are, have much finer detail with fewer artifacts, fewer whiskers and blobs. In previous videos, I've talked about how I make my models, such as this, with 3D printed parts. This is the base for a uh, engine house. Um, then I cover those with high resolution photo paper printed out on a printer and cut with an automated um, cutting machine. So I have PLA parts here, here and here, and throughout the whole thing, smokestack. Uh, and I cover them with the uh, photo paper. 3D printing with resin offers much higher resolution. These parts are printed with a resolution of a tenth of a millimeter, which seems fine, but if you look closely, you get artifacts, little bumps, strings, extra lines, that sort of thing. They're fine for cut for uh, the parts that you cover up, but not for the finished parts. So I spent a lot of time looking into it going on YouTube, finding out about machines and how they operated. And when I saw that Elegoo, which is an interesting name for a company, had a printer on sale, I rushed out and I bought it. Came in this nice big box, it's pretty heavy. This is the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro resin printer. So here I am in my workshop. I'm gonna unbox this and see what we got. Package is very nicely, the machine is very nicely packaged. We have an extra film. A nice toolkit. Go into that layer. And the machine itself. Almost too well protected. So in the tool kit, we have an instruction manual some filters for cleaning the resin, the used resin, a couple of masks, some protective gloves, the power supply, a USB drive, some new tools, Nice pair of cutter pliers, talk about that later. A scraper for removing from the parts from the build plate. And a rubber gasket to put around this. And another plastic scraper. There are significant safety issues to handling the uh, resin. First of all, wear safety glasses keep it out of your eyes. 
wear some sort of a chemical mask to absorb it, the uh, chemicals in it, in the air. Uh, wear chemical gloves to keep it off your skin. And finally, I put a large collection tray below the uh, equipment to collect any spills. Most important, use the equipment and resin in a well-ventilated room. I have an exhaust fan in my workshop area that, along with my chemical mask, protects me, as well as keeping the fumes from spreading to the rest of the house. This is the chemical mask with activated charcoal that came with the Mars 2 Pro. You can buy something like this locally, or some people use a much more professional full-face mask. Chemical gloves that I bought to protect my hands from the uh, resin and also from the isopropyl alcohol that you use to wash the parts. I use old, used darkroom trays to put underneath the equipment to collect any spills that might happen. Finally, I keep a plastic bag below the bench so that I can throw in used uh, wipes or parts that are contaminated. After I'm done, I tie this together and I put it out in the sun for a couple of days. The ultraviolet light in the sun will eventually cure any resin in here, rendering it harmless, so you can just throw it away in the regular trash. So I've got my mask on, I've got my gloves on, I've read all the worrisome warnings. Not very many that are in the manual, by the way. This is, I, I, as I said, I studied on YouTube for quite a while. Uh, I've got a bottle of Elegoo standard photopolymer resin. So I think we're ready to go. So let's go through the actual operations to uh, turn out a part, an N-scale part. To create my models, I use 3D Builder and put together parts using simple rectangles, circles, triangles, etc. The model is then sliced in the program Chitu Box or Chitu Box. That gives a file that can go directly to the 3D printer. In this program, the gray vertical parts are supports that hold up the pieces as they're generated. Okay, we're ready to go. Although it's not easy to see, there's a little marking back there in the container, in the tray, it says max, so you don't overfill this. There's always a danger if you overfill this thing, it'll come down and the thing will spill everywhere. So I've got my bottle of resin, I say mix thoroughly, but obviously you don't want to shake it and get a lot of bubbles. Start exposing that resin down there. Maybe that's the go button. Yep, there we go. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Here's what the printed parts look like coming out of the vat. Note that they're printed upside down. The build plate is held at an angle so that the resin on it can drip into the vat below. This is the Elegoo wash and cure station. The build plate with the parts attached are, is dunked into the alcohol bath, isopropyl alcohol bath, and then stirred for several minutes to get rid of the excess uh, resin on the part and on the build plate. The yellow cover has to be put in place before the stirrer will turn on. After the bulk of the uh, resin is removed by the isopropyl alcohol, I dunk it in a sec second batch of a cleaner isopropyl alcohol to make sure all the resin is removed. Then the part is dry. The parts come out of the printer only partially cured, 
so they have to be rotated on this uh, inside of this curing station in front of the UV lights to cure them completely. And here are the final parts. They break off easily from the support structure. So that's it for now. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Deans and Scale Trains, for more videos on model trains and techniques. Thanks for watching.